G'day YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Gonna have a go at making a video that I've been thinking about for a long time. Years actually. In some respects. Been thinking about this one since before I got onto YouTube, at least the topic. I've been uh, I've been pondering the suicide epidemic that the media tells us we are living through. And they call it a suicide epidemic because here in Australia, more Australians kill themselves every year than die as a result of motor vehicle accidents, crashes. Call them what you will. So, Another way of uh, looking at it is <clears throat> the leading cause of death for Australian males aged from 15 to 45, I think, is suicide. Just those two facts. More suicides than road deaths. I think it's 2,750 or 740 or so per year in Australia, suicides, and the road deaths are around 2200 or something. There's been a bit of a spike in the road deaths lately, more crowded roads, surface not quite perfectly repaired, trucking companies penny pinching, skimping on maintenance, pushing drivers to go faster and work longer hours. So yeah, the, the road kill rate has been rising. But we still have a higher suicide rate. And uh, there are some suicides that make the news. Recently, there was a 14 year old girl from the Northern Territory Apparently when she was about eight years old, she became the national poster child for an ad campaign for a Cobra Hats because she was such a fresh faced, sleep young thing. Um, well, yeah, she grew up and got sent to boarding school. And apparently she got bullied and she killed herself because of the bullying, cyber bullying it was said, um, whether it was random strangers who were getting their jollies by hassling her for having once upon a time been a famous child advertising image or whether it was people from the boarding school bullying her in the holidays i don't know but anyway she killed herself and that made me ponder how many people get bullied and how relatively rare it is to hear of somebody killing themselves because of bullying I think I recall somebody who worked in a restaurant in Melbourne killed themselves because of bullying. Um, I've also heard that 60% of the suicides in Australia are people over the age of 65. Um, but you don't hear a whole lot about them unless you actually know the individual people. Because the media doesn't report suicides as being suicides in case it causes copycat suicides. <coughs> Nonetheless, we are fairly regularly being told that a suicide epidemic is in progress. So there's some other things that we know. We know that there's an entire industry thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of social workers and health workers across the country who get paid to try and lower the national suicide rate. There are outfits like Beyond Blue with superannuated politicians as their figurehead dedicated to attempting to convince people that life is in fact worth living. And I don't know how much overall success that whole industry considers that it has because we're still deluged with claims in the media that we have a suicide epidemic and one of the things you can do to 
to try and get a handle on the figures because there's there's all these different figures. You know, they'll they'll tell you that in Australia we have 24 million people every year, 2,740 of them kill themselves. So that's the background rate. That's a fairly important figure. That one, the background rate, it's 1.145 Australians out of every 10,000 per year are killing themselves. Um, and let's just assume that we've got an 80 year life expectancy. I know that women live for 82 and men live for 78 or something around that. But let's call it an 80 year life expectancy. So 1.145 multiplied by 80, because you live for 80 years, and then divide by 100 to get the actual percentage risk that any one Australian is going to kill themselves during their lifetime, and it's about 0.914%. Right? There's less than 1% chance that any individual Australian is going to die by suicide. Now, what else do we know? Um, well, according to the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare Statistics, we know that military veterans and combat veterans, there's no difference between the two groups for this discussion, they both have twice the background rate of death by suicide. And that apparently starts roughly when they join the military. Curiously, the children of combat veterans, not necessarily the children of mere military veterans, but if they've been in combat, the children of combat veterans, for the whole of their lives, they have three times the background death by suicide rate. They also have 1.8 times the background death from accident rate and 1.2 times the death from illness rate. But I mentioned that we won't sort of include that and say that they die off four times faster than the children of normal people. We'll hold that to saying that they, they die three times more often from suicide. Okay, who else has an acknowledged high suicide rate? Well, I don't know what the gay marriage plebiscite and then parliamentary legislation will do to this figure, but back when it was illegal for same-sex people to marry in Australia, for young homosexuals growing up in rural New South Wales inland towns, they were considered to have six times the average death rate compared to teenagers. and. This went on from about age 15 to age 25. So for that 10 year period, they had six times the background death rate from suicide. But the real kicker, on Valentine's Day 2010, ABC Radio National carried a bulletin seven times an hour apart from six o'clock in the morning till one o'clock p.m. Um, and they said that Melbourne University School of Medicine had done a long baseline study of life outcomes for 2,000 people who'd been sexually abused as children between 1965 and 1985. And it turned out that those survivors of child sexual assault, they had 18 times the average background death rate from suicide and here's another one of those outliers. They had 48 times the background death rate from accidental drug overdose as opposed to suicides. And the deaths, whether they were from suicide or drug overdose, they, they clustered, was the word used in the report, they clustered around 18 years following the abusive incident. So <clears throat> for a period of about 40 years, the death rate peaks 18 years after the incident. How do you compare a death rate for a period of time that forces, forms a peak, a bell curvy sort of peak, how do you compare that with a lifetime, annual every year, every year, every year, a cumulative increased rate? 
So that's what's had me pondering for a long while and it's had me scratching my head and not making any videos or many videos for a week. So let's have a crack at it. Okay, so with a, a tally of 2,750 every year out of the 24 million of us, 1.145 per 10,000, which we're going to call the average background rate. We have the observed correlations by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare Statistics, morbidity and mortality in Vietnam veterans and their children, 1998 and 2000, showing the military and combat veterans having twice the background rate, i.e. 2.29 per 10,000. And that kicks in when they're about 17, when they join up. And at 3.435 per 10,000, the red line, we have the combat veterans' children, and that starts at birth and it runs for their whole life. Your gay teenagers, they have their own bell curve arising from the background level, peaking at about age 20. 6.87 per 10,000. And then, with 1.145 per 10,000 being the background level, 18 times that is 20.61 per 10,000. Is the suicide death rate for childhood survivors of, ch of sexual assault. Okay, so that's graphically restated everything that I said on the walk. But it doesn't really nail things down quantitatively. So do you remember when I said the background rate is not quite 1%? 0 0.916. That means that your military and combat veterans, 1.83% lifetime risk of suicide on an individual basis. Your children of combat veterans, 2.748% chance. Well, if you've got 100 children of combat veterans, then 2.7 of them are gonna kill themselves. Your gay teenagers in New South Wales rural towns, I think just during that particular 10 years, 5.49% chance of suicide. Survivors of child sexual assault spread out over 40 years, you're looking at 16.48% of, quote, survivors, unquote, of child sexual assault will have undergone so much stress that they're in so much pain that they kill themselves. And 48 times or another two and a half times that many of them find their own life and their own memories so painful that they self-administer to the point where they die from an accidental drug overdose. And because of the nature of statistics, all of those child sexual assault victims, all of those gay teenagers, all of those combat veterans' children all of those combat veterans, that's all contained within the background raw figure of 1.145 deaths per 10,000 per year. But I don't know, do you reckon you can call 0.916%, 0.916% of the Australian population committing suicide every year? Can you call that an epidemic? Or is that just sort of media hype reacting to the increasing number of young people who are deciding to do away with themselves? Seems pretty clear to me that certain particular groups of people suffer more from contributing to the suicide statistics compared to the average Australian. 
and I may be wrong, but it seems to me that a lot of the people who are making a living out of the suicide industry don't want to talk about the predisposition to the suicide. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.